So um, everything is removed on there here everything looks fine as you can see and looking at the cylinder liners there is no scratches which is good that means that the engine didn't suffer a massive damage um, everything else looks on place there is no overheated um, rods um, everything looks on place and the main caps they don't look over here too, they look normal. So there is one thing you have to do before uh, doing anything to an engine like this because this engine is in a massive um, way to present a failure, a crunch of failure. So as you can see this little mark over here, I think that's a, a bearing wear. That's right, it's kind of gray. So uh, that means then this cap could present a, ma a, ma a major damage than the other ones because the other ones are clean. <laughs> anyway, um, one main important thing to do is to rotate the engine with the screwdriver. I'm going to make sure that the engine rotates. I'm going to place the screwdriver here. And I'm going to try to rotate the engine, and which it does, as you can see it does rotate so that means then the engine is still running fine yeah so it is a little hard to turn but it still rotates so um, that means that this engine can be safe so as I said before I'm going to replace the main bearings check my other video for uh, the details about replacing the main bearings on a DD15 engine Okay, I'm back. Um, I had to replace all the bearings, the main and the rod bearings on the on on the barrel on the crankshaft. Uh, um, as I said before, if you wanna know how to replace them, you can check my other video where I'm gonna have specific details how to replace the uh, main and the rod bearings on a DD15 engine, and it's gonna be similar for DD13s and DD16s. There is no much difference. The steps are going to vary on the torque, but other than that, it's going to be similar. And here I have all the bearings. So you remember at the beginning of the video, I told you that this engine was in a real danger to get seized. It was about to get seized, and that was it. Uh, you see, four of the rod were about to get seized. See, there is all these four uh, rod bearings. They were just about to get this signs. There was no lubrication at all because the old suction model was broken. So, uh, luckily, I was able to save it, uh, and uh, uh, it will. I, I'm pretty sure it will work with no problems. Um, but the rest of the bearings are okay. The main bearings are in perfect shape. Nothing to worry about. This one is just a little. Uh, damage but nothing to worry about and the cylinder number one rod and cylinder number six rod they're okay so uh, pretty much uh, the engine was just about to get seized luckily uh, the engine didn't run that long and uh, they tow it to uh, my place and I was able to save this engine so now I'm just gonna install everything back together. Uh, all the stuff that I've removed uh, to replace the main bearings and the rod bearings, um, which is the oil pump, the suction models, and the tubes. I'm going to be installing a new suction model because the old one is broken, as you could see at the beginning of the video. The side of the uh, of the old suction model got broken for some reason and I want to be installing a new oil pump as well uh, this will um, uh, help to lubricate the engine better since the oil pump was okay but still it's always good to put a new uh, install a new oil pump every time you service the main bearings or you do the engine when I be installing new o-rings and the tubes because uh, those orange they look like new wool. For some reason, someone did a job, and uh, somewhere something didn't go right on the uh, suction model, which is this one. This piece came off, 
and that's the reason why there was no oil pressure at all because all the pressure was coming from here and was released over here so there was no way for the pressure to get built um, maybe later I want to explain how this one works so uh, you know how the oil system works on a D15 engine because it's a little complex uh, it is different than other engines but anyway uh, I'm gonna be removing the tubes and placing new o-rings to prevent problems of the, in the future even if the o-rings are new I'm gonna replace them with new ones again so I will get back to you as soon as I put everything back together uh, if you wanna know details how to, re how to uh, reinstall the suction module and the tubes and all the stuff you can check the video I talked about at the beginning uh, where I replaced the suction module and the stuff um, I have details about that so I just gonna do that right now and I'm gonna get back to you as soon as I finish that finally after many hours of work this engine is done um, now it's time to start the engine it, it is the first time I'm going to start it after I put everything back together um, I haven't started it yet um, so to start this engine is critical then you uh, make sure then the batteries are fully um, loaded and because I didn't work at anything with the fuel uh, the fuel system is okay so that means then the engine will start right away because the, uh, the fuel system has no air at all so the engine will start right away so it is very important then you check the oil pressure as soon as the engine starts because uh, the engine will start right away it will uh, raise the RPM to, six, to 600 immediately as soon as it starts so the oil pressure shouldn't uh, should be taking around uh, five to six seconds to raise up so it's very important so I'm going to start the engine and pay attention to the oil pressure at the same time I'm looking at the RPM gauge so uh, everything will be all right The pressure is going up now. This is good. Engine is running. That's good news. Very important to hear the engine for noises. Everything sounds normal on the engine. The fuel to quantity valve is making that noise like a clack, clack, but that's normal. But other than that, there is no weird noises coming from the engine, solid noises coming from the engine. Engine is running smooth as you can see. That's good. Uh, there is no oil leaks. So I'm glad that this engine is running with no problems. It's running perfectly. So now I'm going to let the engine run until the temperature raises to the maximum and then I'm going to inspect the oil pressure again. It should be about this line, it should be around here, around 20 psi, 19, 20 is okay. Uh, at maximum temperature around 215, 220, around this. So um, if the pressure drops before, that means that there is a problem, but I'm going to let the engine warm up go to the maximum temperature and then I'm gonna go uh, and inspect again the oil pressure and I'm gonna get back to the video. Alright, with the engine running at a maximum temperature, see the oil pressure? It's a stable, it's a good oil pressure right here. So that means then the engine is running with no problems at all. The fan just keep on, that means then the temperature reaches its maximum and still the oil pressure is in a good, good level. So right now if I floor the engine, the um, oil pressure should go around 50 if I go around uh, like this much right here one uh, 1300 it should be around 50 so that's good that means that the engine is running with no problem now all I have to do is to walk around the engine in here for noises as you can hear
No weird engine noises, which I am glad to hear. Then the engine is running with zero problems. I'm very happy. All right, so this is all I'm going to show you about the messy failure, the this premature failure that this engine had, as you could see, that was this problem was caused because there was a major problem with the oil suction module you saw at the beginning of the video that was broken. So this problem didn't supposed to happen, but that was the cause of this issue. I don't know if that was a manufacturer defect or uh, when they installed, because that part was new, when they installed that part, they hit it with something or something happened. I don't, I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, I'm happy to know that I brought this engine back to life and is running with no problems at this moment. Anyway, this is all I'm going to show you about this problem that this engine had. Um, Thanks to Nationwide again to allow me to do this video. They provide the truck and they provide some other stuff to make this video possible. And special thanks to Kong Lee as well, which is the VP of Nationwide. Um, as I said before, if you want to do business with them, they're ready to take your applications. Just check the video description below where I have details how to contact them and they will be ready to uh, take applications of any type in the uh, trucking industry uh, you have questions about this video you can use the comment section below to leave comments um, suggestions recommendations or any uh, complaint that you have about this video you can use the comment section below so uh, you can share opinions and anything uh, about this video if you want to send support to my channel you can check the description uh, of this video in the section below where I have details how to send support to my channel so I can continue making helpful videos like the one I just did right now which I know is going to help a lot of people with uh, the DD15 engines so like, share, subscribe and thank you for watching